I trust that most people here, one of the reasons why we're here is because we all agree that there is a problem of radical Islam, not just in Britain but in the world today, that a militant Islamist movement does exist. It's extremely powerful. Several countries are in its grip. Uh, it's growing, and it's, uh, it's growing in presence not only in individual countries but in the UN and in communities in this country. It is real. It has a real presence, and it shouldn't be ignored. Now, um, that said, um, I now want to get on to insulting you. Um, this problem, I would submit, ladies and gentlemen, will not be solved by everyone in this hall here tonight, even by everyone on this panel, noble sentiments as I'm sure we'll all express. This hall and you will not solve this problem. You will not solve it on your own. It will require a whole range of people making their own individual points and their own individual positions to do that. And as maybe the only small C conservative on this panel, I, maybe even in the hall, I'd like to make the following point, which is how much some of us object to the idea that there are parameters for debate and parameters of what is respectable within debate that will be decided solely on the left. Uh, there are all sorts of criteria that can be applied to uh, your own personal judgment of what you think is right and wrong. But this uh, debate will have to be had a lot more frankly if we're going to win it. The first thing I'd say is this. Uh, just as in the Cold War, in the battle against communism, um, a, a vital component is a toolbox approach to defeating the enemy of Islamist extremism. Now, some of that will be people who uh, you and I don't like. There are standards and norms which we can certainly express but we should be exceedingly careful, I would submit, about where we draw those lines. Because before you know it, uh, you'll be chucking out people who may well have perfectly legitimate points to make and who may well have, believe it or not, a larger following than any of us here tonight could ever have. Are there places you draw the lines? Of course. I think everyone in this hall would be in agreement. The British National Party is an overtly racist organization. It always has been. There's not going to be a moment when it isn't. Nobody's going to join uh, who doesn't believe in those fundamentally racist principles of the party. Are there people like that who will jump on this bandwagon? Sure. But we're going to have to be extremely careful in who else we lump in uh, with them. Uh, we, we spend all of our time, and quite rightly, shouldn't stop doing it. Uh, differentiating out between different types of Islam, different types of Muslims, and so on and so forth. But the minute it's a group of white, middle-aged men, it's with huge delight that people decide, excellent, we will dismiss them as one single block, no need to investigate further. Let me give you an example. The English Defence League, a, a, an extraordinary phenomenon, which, by the way, in my opinion, wouldn't have occurred if, it ha if the government had have got a, 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 a grip on al mujahiroon It only came about because the authorities didn't do anything about that particularly thuggish organization. These things have uh, uh, consequences. Um, the English Defence League, when they started protesting, had banners saying things like, you know, Sharia law discriminates against women. Sharia law is anti-gay. Well, I'm good with both of those sentiments. I'm sure most people in this room are. If you were ever going to have a grassroots response for non-Muslims to Islamism, that would be how you'd want it, surely. But, of course, we all know there are awkward things around this. There have been exposed links from the EDL with far-right organizations in individual cases, and maybe uh, uh, others will know more about this uh, uh, wider than that. But, you know, for instance, Louis Amis wrote a very interesting piece in Standpoint magazine some months ago after an investigation, and he, he said, and others have said, that as far as they can see within the EDL, they have tried to kick out BMP elements. Does that mean that uh, they aren't racist or they are I, not making a definitive point? Just saying these things are extremely complex, and we ought to be careful before dismissing whole swathes of people. Thirdly, these groups stop the Islamization of Europe and stop the Islamization of America. I mean, I don't know enough about them, maybe. As far as I can see, stop the Islamization of Europe only has a few members. Uh, um, and uh, in America, Robert Spencer is one of the directors. I happen to know Robert Spencer. I respect him. He's an, a very uh, a brilliant scholar and writer. Now, some people in this hall may disagree with him, may disagree with all sorts of things he says. Well, sure, but Mariam Namar 
Namazi sitting beside me is a communist. I disagree with Mariam Namazi on a whole range of things. She disagrees with me because I'm a conservative. But I don't think that Mariam Namazi should be out of the debate. I don't think anyone who was once a member of the communist... I mean, I'm sitting on a panel with somebody who's a member of the communist party. Does that mean in future I should never be given a platform? The 20th century had two dreadful totalitarianisms, fascism and communism. Some of the people who people in this hall would throw out from being ever allowed to speak are being thrown out because once they met somebody who once sat on a platform with somebody who was once a member of a fascist party. Well, I'm sitting on a platform with a communist. That would mean I could never again speak in public if there was any sense to this debate. But there isn't, because people have this debate so ruddy badly. All spend their time polishing their halos. Yes, we're against racism. Yes, we're against fascism. We're against lots of things, but it's we're going to require a bit more than that and a bit more of this halo polishing if you're going to deal with that. And as I say, I'll leave you with one final thought on that. If this battle is going to be won, it will not be won solely by the people sitting in Conway Hall here tonight. It will be won by a lot of people. We will have to make judgments along the way. And we'll disagree with them. I'll disagree with Mariam. I'll disagree with Shiraz and all sorts of friends and colleagues. We'll disagree on individual cases and people. But the idea that you chuck whole swathes of people out of the debate is such a bloody left-wing thing to do. The left loves doing this all the time. The debate will be done on my terms. Well, how easy and how surprising, unsurprising it is that the terms are always drawn around themselves. I hope we can do a bit better than that. Thank you. A couple of things very, very briefly in the two minutes I have. The first is this, uh, in the, uh, some of the comments came, the, let me just flag up a couple of things. It will not be possible to defeat uh, Islamist extremism whilst uh, denigrating, for instance, people in this country who are concerned about immigration. It's not possible because a very, very large proportion of people in this country are concerned about immigration. It tends to be the number one, or if not number one, two issue in polling in this country. So, as it were, those people who just say, you know, people who talk about immigration all the time, you know, those people aren't beyond the pale. They might be perfectly decent. They are, in most cases, perfectly decent people who are concerned about an issue. And I don't think it should be glibly dismissed any more than people who are concerned about demogra uh, demographics. There are people who have serious concerns about demographics because they're seriously concerned that the society they were born into is changing beyond recognition. That doesn't mean they should be dismissed as whack job kooks or racists. They might have a perfectly legitimate point. I think they do. The second thing, it, it was demonstrated by one of the people who, who said, you, this gentleman there, talked about you know, going to the protest of the Pope rally. If I may say so, this, I, I, you know, I, I wasn't there, I didn't approve of the protest, because there were various things around that I think are complete guff. One of them is the fact that people love saying they went to the protest of the Pope thing. I, you know, the, the, the Pope, you know, the, 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 the sort of, you know, Pope's not, not, not on board with gay marriage. You know, I'm a gay man, I'd love to have gay marriage uh, uh, approved by the Catholic Church. But, you know, they're not going to. Meantime, I really, really wish that people would reserve their eye for the people who don't just want to stop me marrying, but want to throw me off a cliff. Much, much better way to spend your time. But of course people love it, because they think, oh, I'll attack the Islamists, but then to be allowing, allow myself to do that, I can attack the Pope to show I'm not a racist. Show me a Monsignor, grab me a Cardinal, and I, and I can attack them, because that will allow me. This is left-wing nonsense. Again, paedophile priests, you said. You know, if you'd have just stood there and said, you know, I mean, I'm trying to protect to protect Muslims from paedophile imams, people go, oh, how Islamophobic. And it, actually, in that case, it probably would be. But you say paedophile priests and smear the Catholic priesthood, and it's not a problem. And thirdly, finally, getting toward the end, a lot of this problem comes down, and the, thing, the, the question we didn't get onto tonight, the, 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 the fact is this. At the end of the Second World War, the Nazi leaders were tried and executed. At the end of the Cold War, it didn't happen. One of the biggest problems we have is the fact that it wasn't resolved. The people who did, who did the largest massacres, the largest number of deaths caused by any movement in history were not brought to trial. It's thought of as Ardian, the leading left-wing newspaper, had Richard Gott, one of its editors, a paid member of the KGB, a paid KGB agent who said, oh, it was just a bit of a laugh. Oh, and it still is just a bit of a laugh. Because if it's communism, it's a bit of a laugh. 70 million dead here and there, a bit of a laugh. Uh, 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 and so on. So please, let's adjust our fucking values. Um, and finally, and finally, 
Uh, this is the, a lot of this is a simple mental breakdown of the left. I hesitate to say this in the presence of Nick Cohen, who's who charted, chronicled this better than anyone. But the mental breakdown of the left, the fact that at so-called left-wing meetings, we have the obsessions with Palestine, for instance. There was one recently, again, I saw, gays for Palestine. Give me a break. If gays for Palestine were in Palestine, they'd have to move to Israel. <laughs> the, the, just don't fall for this rubbish. And don't fall for it when it's coming from the right or the far right. And don't fall for it when it's coming from the left or the far left. Have some decency.